Hi, today I'm going to show you how to checkmate with a bishop and knight. Uh, checkmating with a bishop and knight is very difficult, and it's something that a lot of players don't learn because it's not very useful. But you know what? A couple of people asked me to make a video to show how to checkmate with bishop and knight, so I'll be showing you how to checkmate with a bishop and knight. Um, the first thing you have to know is that we have to checkmate the king in the same color corner as the bishop, which means that the black king wants to go to the opposite corner. Um, we're going to let it go there. And once it gets to one of these corners, we're just going to push it up the edge of the board. And when I get it to one of these corners, I'll show you how to push it. So let's start. Um, the first thing to do is to activate my king. Let's move the king up the board. And just by moving my king into the center of the board, we start to take away squares from the black king. Let's just move up my king and take away squares. Okay, we've gotten to sort of the first moment where I have to think a little bit. And the process that I use is I highlight the squares that I'm attacking, and this allows me to draw a wall of squares on the board and show exactly what squares I'm controlling to see if I'm pushing the king to the edge. Um, it would be nice if I'm able to bring this knight in in some way and control some squares, um, some additional squares, and make the wall somehow bigger. So what I'm going to do is um, let's find a good square for the knight. I think that knight g4 as a starter is pretty good. Right, and now the wall looks like this. You can see that I've created like an L shape and the king can't go here, so it's gonna have to start uh, basically backing up and this makes me happy. Okay, the second thing I'll do is develop the bishop a little bit like this and take away some more squares. And um, you could see that uh, this king is gonna like slide over this way, I don't mind. I could push him to this corner or this one, either is fine. And um, I'm gonna go Let's see, can I take away the d6 square with my knight? Something like this. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do that. So I have this wall right now. And once I go knight f5, I'll take away the d6 square and the wall will be improved. Like this, okay? And I'm just creating this wall and pushing the king farther and farther and farther. So let's move my king, my pieces and my king are now in the center of the board. One, two, three, four, five. This is a long wall, and that's because all three of my pieces are developed. Okay, um, what can I do next? It seems like it seems like my king is only needed for this square. If my king weren't here, then I'd have this wall. So maybe my king starts to work its way around like this. Yeah, let's try that. Okay, um, he could have gone up. Again, I would push him this way if he went up. I don't mind. Um, but I'm pushing him this way. I don't mind either. And let's draw the wall. This is a nice wall, but the black king is going to come back up this way. So I think that uh, maybe taking the c5 square away from the king would help. Or maybe even just moving the bishop in and taking c4 away. Now let's move the bishop in. Take away these squares. Here's my wall right now. Okay, the black king is about to escape this way. And when it escapes this way, I want I maybe want to use my knight to watch the c5 and maybe d6 square. So maybe something like this. Like this. I'm not going to, by the way, I'm not really showing you the fastest way to checkmate, and I understand that. I'm just showing you a method you can use. Okay, now I'm controlling these two dark squares. I'm controlling these squares with my king. And now I'm going to tr try to control these light squares with my bishop, and that'll make a nice wall. This will for sure make a nice wall. Okay, and the king is starting to be pushed. I think I can go... How do I get the king to not go back to e5? I have an idea. Like this. If he went back to e5, I would have checked him and pushed him away. He went this way. Remember, the black king doesn't want to go to h1, so I don't really have to prevent it from going to h1. It's not going to go there. If he does go to h1, checkmate just gets easier. Okay, step my king up. Step my king up again. Let's draw the wall first, okay? Draw the wall. Um, and if I step my king up, the wall gets a bit smaller. Like this. This is my wall right now. And the black king doesn't want to go this way. 
It doesn't want to go to the corner, so I don't really mind that it has a that it has a way out this way. I mind that it has a way back into the center. So if it goes this way, I step up and I'll take away more squares. Okay. So that being said, the Black King is probably going to stay basically um, in these three squares. And how do I get it out? Uh, basically, when it steps to the corner, I'll I'll show you in a second. Let's just bring the knight in first. Uh, maybe I move like this. And now that the knight is watching the h6 square, my king can. Here's my wall. My king can move up and take away the g7 square, like this. Here's my wall, and the king is at the edge of the board. Okay, so the king is now in the corner. Here's where we need to start uh, basically thinking about um, how to efficiently move the king to one of these two corners. So identify your wall. Here's my wall, right? And when I see my wall, I realize that um, I've got a tunnel pointing towards h1. So pushing it to a8 would be wrong. We want to push it to h1. And how do we push it to h1? We take away the h8 square, so it has to go up by one square. What's the best way to take away h8? A move like knight g6. So let's move the knight to g6. And this is the first major idea. We use g6 to take away the h8 square. Here's my wall. And I'm also watching h8. So I have my little tunnel and I'm slowly pushing black through the tunnel. This is nice. Um, the other thing to note is not to go to f7. If I was on f7, I would watch the h8 square, but I'd also be blocking my bishop, and the king would escape out this way. So that would not work. I have to watch the h8 square from the only square that doesn't block the bishop's view. So here's my wall, and here's where the first technique comes in. Um, let's take away a second square, and then I'll show you the technique. Here's the wall. The king is being pushed out this way. Here's where the first technique comes in. The king can escape like this. And when you realize the king can escape, you use the knight in this V-shape. And the knight in this V-shape will just make everything work. You just have to trust the process. Knight in the V-shape like this. And the knight will then go to G4. Of course, the knight on G4 will be taken. So you can prepare it by defending the G4 square. And there's basically nothing black can do. You don't worry about what black's doing. You get the knight to G4, and then you start thinking. Okay, the knight on the g4 square is actually very nicely placed because the knight controls dark squares and the bishop controls light squares. So the bishop and knight have incredible synergy right now. Let's draw our wall and I'll show you exactly what I mean. Here's all the squares that are being controlled and you'll notice that the black king can kind of get out like this. That should immediately tell you where the bishop is supposed to go. The bishop goes here controlling some light squares and all of a sudden you have a really impressive wall like this, and there's no holes, there's only this hole. That's really the only hole. And my king can step up whenever I need to, so I don't mind that. Let's watch and just basically slowly push this king in. Here's my wall right now, like this, and the king is gonna use the f3 square, so let's take away the f3 square. Here's my wall now, and um, as you've noticed, there's, there's a little bit of a trick. I've let the black king out, but um, I can move up and block and I don't need to hold my knight because my bishop is defending my knight. So there is a little bit of foresight that went into this. One, two, three. Here's the wall right now. The king can escape this way. So I'm gonna move down and just cover that hole. Okay, um, now this is a bit tricky because I'm a little bit in zugzwang. No matter what piece I move, um, I'm gonna have to break a part of the wall. For example, my king moves and you, you escape this way, or my bishop moves and you escape this way, or my knight moves and you escape this way. So when you're in a position like this, try to get the same position but for black to move. So what I do here is I just move my bishop back and I give you a square. Let's draw the wall. I give you a square, you move to this square and you're threatening to get out. And I'm just gonna take that square away, driving the king back to where it came from. And once I move back to e2, you'll notice that I have this exact same wall I had before, but it's black to move. That's the important part. We've given black the same position, but since it's black to move, he can't stand on g3. He's gotta now move back. And this makes everything work. Here's the wall. And now I get to take the g3 square away from you. Um, how do I wanna do it? Let's see. Um, I see. If I move my bishop, the uh, if I move my knight, my knight's only being used on f2, and the black king is not close to f2. So I can actually move my knight away. I'm going to move my knight onto a square where it attacks both f2 and g3, and that's this square, like this. So let's go to the 
e4 square. And the king, let's draw the wall. The king is about to escape through the hole, so we move the knight to e4 just in time to clog the hole. And not only have I clogged the f2 square, same wall as before, but I've also now started watching g3. So sometimes you need to maneuver your pieces around to get additional squares in the wall. Let me take away the h3 square like this, and this is really nice now. Um, I've got a very, very tight wall, and this king is being pushed to the corner. Uh, one last little trick you need to know um, is, again, wasting a move. The king is near the corner. Let's move my king, waste a move. And this is, the little, this is the last trick you need to know. I'll show you it right now. Taking away the g2 square is a bit tricky. I use the bishop to take away the g2 square. And that means that, let's draw the wall. That means I've moved my bishop into danger. The black king can take my bishop. So I move the bishop up like this. Same wall, except my king is now helping. And now um, I want to move my king to g3 and take away some last squares. Of course, the black king is here. So all I have to do is waste a move. Let's waste a move with the knight. Um, let's do this. Waste a move with the knight. And now my king steps in. Let's draw the wall. The wall's nice, but there's a hole here. So we cover that square. Here's the wall now. And when the king has exactly two squares left, um, this is when you know you've basically succeeded. This king has to basically move back and forth in this corner. And now just constructing the checkmate. Um, the knight's going to watch the dark square, the bishop's going to watch the light square, and that makes this idea very straightforward. If I go knight e2, it's stalemate. Don't fall into this trap. Use the bishop first, and then the knight, and this is checkmate. Okay, great. So now I'm going to show you guys how to do it again, but I've switched the color of the bishop, and I'm going I'm to do it a bit faster this time. Um, so let's go ahead and get started, probably just with, uh, what, knight f Knight f2, I, I king f2 is also good. King f2 is great. Let's move knight f2, just get all the pieces into the center of the board. I'm doing it quicker this time because you guys have already seen it once. What I really want you to see is the same rule applies. I want to get this king to a dark squared um, corner. And for that reason, he wants to go to a light squared corner where he's safe. And we start him there. Just move my pieces to the center of the board. Pretty straightforward idea. All right, and if I move my king here, it's stalemate. That's pretty funny. Let's just um, let's just take some squares away. Now I've got uh, now I've got a wall, and this wall at the edge of the board it's like a tunnel, and we want to push the king down to a1. So how do we take away the a8 square? I move the knight into b6. So how does the knight get to b6? Let's go here, here. Um, wait, yeah, here. It's gonna take a couple moves. It's gonna take a couple moves to get to the b6 square. Like this, this, this. Like this. There, we've taken away that square. Here's our wall. And we've taken away one square. So the king has to start moving down. Success. I want to take away a second square by going bishop b8, but I don't want to lose the bishop, so we waste a move. Force the king to move and give us the a7 square. Here's my wall. The king's about to escape. Here's where you need to put your trust in the system. Use the V-shape method. V-shaped method like this. And I would go knight b4, but my knight gets taken. So first defend the square, trust the system, knight b4, and then you start calculating. This V-shaped method puts the knight on a square where it's watching colors that the bishop is not. So here's the wall. We see that we have some dark squared holes in our wall. And that's where the bishop comes in handy, clogging up those squares. Watching, let's draw the wall now. Like this, and the king is starting to get pushed to a corner. This is great. Um, let's just go here and push the king further. And let's go here and push the king further. Let's draw the wall. I'm using the same trick. The king looks like it's getting out, but I'm clogging some of these squares. Um, here's the wall. And um, if I go here, you go here, and you put me in zig swing. So I want to go here, actually. So that way when you step here, I step here, and I make it so it's black to move. Here's the wall, like this. And um, yeah, so here it's where it's a bit tricky. Uh, the knight's watching c2 and only c2. So if I move the knight away, 
um, I can move the knight to a square where it's still watching c2, but it's also watching b3. So let's try this. Watching these two squares, and we could see that the bishop and knight are making an excellent wall. This is just bishop and knight. The king isn't doing any of these. So let's bring the king up, take some squares away. Um, I'll move here. Because when you move to b2, I want to put you in zugzwang. These are the squares I'm controlling, and <laughs> the wall's getting uh, pretty tight now. Let's take away the b2 square with the bishop like this. Take away the b2 square. The wall is getting tighter and tighter. Of course, the black king can take my bishop, so I move the bishop and continue watching. The wall's getting tighter and tighter. Um, let's just uh, basically... I want to go king b3. The king is watching b3, so I waste a move, get this king to move away, and then I go king b3. So, um, how about this? Wasting a move and moving my king in. Now the king, the black king has exactly two squares, like this, back and forth, back and forth. And here's where you start to figure out how the checkmate looks like. Um, in this wall, the bishop delivers check on the dark square, the knight delivers check on the light square, and they work together like this. Bishop first, and then knight to make sure that I avoid stalemate. And there you go. Great, so I've checkmated um, black with a knight and bishop twice, once with uh, each color bishop. So hopefully you guys can watch the video a couple times. It's a pretty complicated process um, and use it to uh, hopefully get a knight bishop checkmate in your own games. So thanks for watching.